this episode of Pedalbox, we're pulling the front clip off the Thunderbird and finally finishing the brake system. Well, the plan we made was calculated, but man, I am bad at maths. I'm hoping taking the front clip off is going to be relatively simple. It should all just bolt on, bolt off. I've seen them do this plenty of times on other channels on YouTube, and how hard can it be is a really good way to ruin your day. But we have got the Bible. We've got this lovely shop manual for the 1966 Ford that we picked up at Zip Tie, what, two trips ago? 20, about. It's been a while 2018, now, yeah. so it was just after I bought this. Uh, a friend of ours, Gav, found this in the Bring and Buy and pick that up. So that has been really useful to see what we need to do for a few other odds and ends on this car. So we need to start stripping this down. First thing to come off is the bonnet. We'll get that back out of the way because it's actually looking reasonably good. And now comes the easy part where we have to take off the bumper and then we think the valance, the grill, get the lights out maybe, and then we can actually get the wings off. Yeah, let's get to it. Well, that was a lot more of a fight than we expected, but we have won as far as I'm concerned. We've got both fenders and yes. the front end off the car. Yeah, it's all gone pretty well. There's some hidden bolts where there are panels on one side, but not the other side. So fortunately I've got some replacements, but that didn't help when we were trying to work out how this all comes apart. It's not quite as detailed in the ultra manual as I would have liked. Yeah, there was a few undocumented steps, shall we say. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's a couple other bits and pieces that we're gonna whiz off while we're here before the rain starts properly. We've got a few brackets and things that look nice and easy to remove. So we're gonna try and get a couple of those off. So if it is raining still tomorrow, we can clean those up in the garage. Yeah, it would have been nice not discovering that the um, passenger side wing, well, yeah, UK driver side wing, was welded on in three or four spots. So whoever did the, the repair work before this came over to the UK, because the rust in there was old, um, had tacked it on at the front onto the slam panel rather than just leaving it bolted, and also tacked it onto the main rail along the side of the car, which was less than convenient to discover. I'm pretty certain whatever crash this had was on that side of the car, which is why this inner wing is black and not color matched, and that wing is also not color matched to the rest of the car and welded in place where it's missing brackets. So yeah, reconvene tomorrow, pull the rest of these bits off tonight and uh, call it a day. I think so. Well, the plan we made was calculated, but man, I am bad at maths. When we took the wings off yesterday, we started to find a lot of corrosion underneath the battery tray, which wasn't really surprising, and it is completely rotten through. I'm gonna to have to make a new flat panel, which is fairly simple by the looks of it, to fit in there and go into the inner bodywork. And that's the least of the problems. Even on this side, this section where it was broken, presumably in the crash that happened on this side of the car, hasn't been fixed properly. And this has just been welded across the top and we're gonna bend this down and flatten this out. But this side of the car, despite all of this rust, is nothing compared to the hack job that's been done on that wheel arch over there. On this side of the car, this whole area was just filled in with Bondo to make it look like it was the right shape. Now we've taken all of this back and the Bondo actually goes down to this patch panel that's around this sort of shape, which has been welded in. It's been badly formed, so maybe this was just a miscellaneous piece of metal or perhaps it was an original piece that was broken. Don't know, but we're gonna to have to cut all of this out and put a new panel in across the top to fill in around these edges here. Still not too complicated, but it's a really badly done job. And when they'd done it, they'd primed, painted, and bondo just over the top of rust, over the top of paint. It's really, really bad. Now, Ian, I know who I bought this car off, 
uh, didn't get this exactly like it is here. All of this rust is far too old for the last sort of three or four years it's been in the country. So I guess this has kind of saved him from a bit of a, a travesty to find himself, but we're going to fix it as best we can. We're obviously not a body shop, so it's going to be a little bit interesting and it's probably not going to be completely perfect, but it is going to get it back on the road sooner with a little bit more confidence in how strong this section of the car is. Well, as Adrian mentioned, there's quite a lot of rust in that battery tray. And now that we've taken off some of the surrounding panels, we can see the extent of it. It's pretty bad. So the approach we're going for here is we're going to cut all of it out and put a nice new flat metal tray in. There was this plastic battery tray in the car. We're pretty sure it's not original because it's plastic, um, but it is about the right size for a good sized battery to fit in there. And we can make that work just by putting something metal underneath to support it. About an hour later, Adrian's been busy beating up a new battery tray. Uh, this is the way it fits into the car roughly. We've got a little lip there that sits onto the frame rail and then up at the front, it goes up against the front clip. And then this curve up the back is where it flows into the wheel arch. So we're gonna tack this in place. It's not a perfect fit. It's the nature of us being, you know, kind of noobs. So we're gonna tack it in place roughly and then kind of massage it in a bit more in the minutes to come. Well, today's gone really, really well so far. We've got the new battery tray mostly in. It's still a little ugly because we haven't tidied the welds up yet, and there's good reason for that. Unfortunately, Adrian got part way around, and it was, the welds were going down real great, and then we ran out of wire. So that kind of put the tin hat on that one. So we've spent the rest of our afternoon tidying as much of the other metal up as we can, carving off a lot of grease and goo off of it. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to shoot some primer and paint. We've got a nice, easy afternoon ahead of us now, we hope. I'm going to pop the calipers off and replace all the seals inside them. And while We've got a nice easy afternoon, a nice easy afternoon, a nice easy afternoon, a nice easy afternoon ahead of us now, we hope. Shouldn't have said that. Nope. I should not have said that. Mm -mm. Never say it's an easy job. It's always a four hour job, minimum. Changing a brake bolt, oh, it's, it's going to be at least a, at least a day. Maybe, this is worse maybe two. That. This was way worse than that. Yeah. Yeah, so it's now, what, three, four weeks later? They're about, yeah. Yeah, we got the calipers off all right and uh, stripped them all down, didn't quite get all the way through them and discovered that at least three out of the eight pistons are basically seized into the calipers and there's no way to get them out without damaging them. Pretty much, and also in doing so, we broke either one or both of the transfer pipes that run from one side of the caliper to the other. So we've got to get new transfer pipes and in trying to remove the remaining pistons, these two here and one on the other caliper, we mangled them so badly that even once we've removed them, we won't be able to use them again. Like they're, they're scored up and beaten. So Adrian needs to buy some new pistons. Yeah, go me. So there is good news and bad news. Obviously we need to get those pistons out of the calipers somehow. And we don't care about those pistons because new ones are readily available. Now a supplier I've used before called Rock Auto in America, who handily organized shipping all of my parts to a hotel that I was staying at when we went to Roadkill Zip Tie Drags in 2018, does have them in stock. But they only have four in stock, not the eight that I would really like. So that's a little bit of a downside. The other ones that we have are actually in pretty good condition. I mean, this one looks really dirty, but it's not pitted. The outside edge seems okay, but they do clean up quite nicely, as you can see with this one. The other good piece of good news is Rock Auto has a massive sale on at the moment of lots and lots of parts for Thunderbirds. So there's all kinds of little itty bitty seals for intake manifolds, exhaust manifold gaskets, all sorts of bits and pieces like that, that ordinarily I would never get shipped on a whim. However, because we also now need some pistons, we might as well get it all shipped together. The downside with that is it's now gonna take probably another week at least to get here, plus through customs, and then there's customs charges. So it's not ideal, but it should mean that this is more together again with a whole bunch of new parts ordered on this next order. If you want to get your hands on some of our sweet, sweet merch, like these beanies and those t-shirts, you can jump onto our store at shop.pedalbox.show. If you want to support us more directly, or in this case, really more pay for our mistakes, 
you can jump on patreon.com forward slash pedalbox show and support us from anywhere upwards of a dollar a month. I think a dollar buys what your water pump gasket or water pump gasket is about 24 cents on this rock auto sale at the moment so I could get four of those for a dollar less tax plus tax uh, it's complicated but I can definitely buy one at least without shipping go up to the five dollar <laughs> tier and you buy us a new brake caliper piston yeah that would be sweet by the way if anybody wants to do that that would be really really good of you if you haven't already do subscribe to the channel and eventually Maybe not this year, but next year, this will be on the road. Everybody says that, don't they? Nobody, oh, yeah. no, it never works. But I mean, here's living in hope. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time with more parts, more cars and more mistakes. <laughs>